What's up guys? My name is Lauren and today I'm really excited about this video because I'm actually going to share with you the complete grocery list for the carnivore diet. There's been a lot of interest around this carnivore diet from the last video I made about my experience my first month doing the carnivore diet. That was a little while ago um, now, but for me, I have I literally never in my life had such an easy time implementing a meal plan. I shouldn't even call it a meal plan, really just implementing a lifestyle that made me not only lose weight extremely quickly, but I was never hungry. I wasn't confused by all this, you know, stupid details and the point systems and all this stuff that, all this crap that companies try to sell us. I have never felt better, I have never looked better, and all around it's something that I have chosen to adopt for myself as a new lifestyle change. I'm gonna go through exactly what my grocery list is. If anybody is, you know, struggling with autoimmune disease, mental health, like anxiety or depression. I was on Prozac for nine years. I know very much how that how that goes. If you have any issues, you know, with heart disease in your family, joint pain, diabetes, any of that kind of stuff, or you're just considering, you know, a lifestyle change to help you lose weight. Maybe you're obese or just a little bit overweight, or you're trying to get rid of that, like, you know, the squishy stuff there, and you want to like show show your body, your muscles, and all that, and you want to build muscle. I'm telling you, you guys, the carnivore diet is the only thing that I have found that works. So just for anybody who's wondering what carnivore diet is, carnivore diet is 100% eating animal foods, okay? So pretty much the, the total opposite of vegan, uh, but you're not eating any, any plants or any vegetables on the carnivore diet. Once somebody's in the carnivore diet for like a few months, maybe like six months, and they, you know, their body's adapted and they can really understand what is good for their individual body type, sometimes those people can implement like a little bit of fruits, some berries, and that kind of stuff. But really, what we're doing with carnivore diet is just taking it real back to the basics and pretty much going to, um, you know, how our ancestors used to eat before we had all this crap and all this stuff everywhere. Okay, so the very first protein that I'm going to talk about is beef. This is my favorite one. Beef is amazing. I know a lot of people that are on carnivore diet only eat beef. So if we're like looking for options in beef and we're feeling beef a lot, which I highly recommend, um, I'm going to be reading off my list here, but ribeye steak is great. New York strip steak is great. T-bone steak, ground beef, short ribs or back ribs, brisket, skirt steak, tri-tip steak, porterhouse steak, and chuck roast. So I have tried uh, pretty much all of these. They're all bomb. I highly recommend. Um, the second list that we're gonna go to for the grocery list, shopping list for this carnivore lifestyle is gonna be for chicken and pork. Um, you know, I haven't really eaten that much chicken myself because it's not super high in fat and the higher meats you have with the higher amounts of fat is actually more satiating for all of us. Our bodies need fat and contrary to what we've all been sold about fat, that fat is bad for us, fat makes you fat, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's not true, it's completely false. I mean, I could go on for days and days how it's just completely ruined the minds and the bodies of our of, um, the last generation. But just to, just to get it out there, we need fat. Fat is probably the second most important macro that we need, second to protein. So fat is huge for this. If we're gonna do the chicken and the pork lists, for grocery lists, this, this is what I would typically buy. I go ahead and get a rotisserie chicken. Bomb, I've always <laughs> loved rotisserie chicken. You really can't go wrong there. Uh, chicken wings, and that's gonna be without the sauce. So get just rotisserie style chicken wings. So like if you're out at a restaurant, rotisserie style chicken wings is the way to go. Chicken thighs, ch uh, chicken drumsticks, of course, chicken breasts, all that's good. Going on to pork, pork ribs are great. Pork belly slash bacon. Bacon is great. There's a little controversy around bacon because they are mixed, like cooked with seed oils and seed oil is really, really bad for us. Um, but you know, I'm kind of one of those pe people where it's like, pick your vice. I'm gonna have bacon. I like bacon. So just try to make it um, sugar-free bacon when you go to the store. A lot of these companies will put sugar in their bacon. There are, it's like uncured or cured sugar-free bacon. That's the one you wanna pick because you're trying to pull yourself away from the sugar. So bacon for sure. I have that every single day. Um, pork chops, pork shoulder, and pork butt. That list right there is a pretty solid 
pretty solid way to go as far as pork and chicken. Like I said, pork does have more fat than chicken. They're both great though. I think this is about creating variety. So if you're big on chicken and you love eating chicken, just make sure you don't just eat only chicken. You need some, you know, some of the other stuff that we put in there, like, um, you know, beef and, and, and pork to add to that as well because of the fat. The next list is going into seafood and lamb. So on this carnivore lifestyle, absolutely we can have seafood. It's all different kinds, kinds of meats, which is cool. So it allows us to have a lot of variety. Going off of that list, we have salmon, trout, and mackerel. Those are all really, really great for this. I just had salmon two nights ago was great. Um, shrimp and lobster, also good. If you're gonna do that, just get away from the breading on the shrimp. If you're gonna have it like breaded, you know, you can't do that. Um, and then if you're gonna dip it in that like sauce, you know, I would say the, the right thing to say would be like, don't do that. But if you're gonna have like a teeny, 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 tiny, tiny little baby dip of just like a few shrimps, that's okay. But don't, like, again, you're gonna stay for, away from the sauces on this. So. Um, anyways, shrimp and lobster is great. Scallops, mussels, oysters, crabs, clams, lamb chops, lamb shanks, and ground lamb. Lamb is amazing. So um, you can even get that lamb from like a gyro that they make there. The problem with um, just the problem with buying things out sometimes is like what people cook things with. I'm gonna get into that in a little bit about what you're supposed to cook with in cooking all these things but sometimes um just like bacon they're cooked in seed oils and seed oils are really inflammatory for us so just be cautious of what they're cooking lamb in and that kind of stuff okay so now that we've gone through kind of like those three major pillars of types of foods that we can eat and a grocery list i want to go through kind of like the less optimal types of foods that we can buy at a grocery store when we're doing this these are not meant to be like the main portion of your day-to-day -day food right like this is supposed to add to what you're eating, which we just went over. These foods are like supplemental, okay? So starting top to bottom, eggs. I eat eggs every damn day. I literally love eggs and bacon. I don't care, like my trick for that, if you saw my other video, um, was I would cook the bacon, get it all you know, greasy and all that, and then put the, the eggs, the scrambled eggs, in the bacon fat and cook that. So good, so filling, so much good protein and fat in there. Just try not to make eggs like your every single meal type of food. That's supposed to be like maybe one a day or one every other, you know, that kind of thing. But um, cheese, I actually didn't do cheese when I first started the carnivore diet. So um, if you're gonna do cheese on the carnivore diet, just know that you, you might wanna start out with um, just meat and then maybe after two months or so start to reintroduce cheese but if you really just can't help yourself cheese is on the list so hallelujah <laughs> um, heavy cream yeah take it or leave it I didn't really use it yogurt is an option again all of this stuff is sugar-free um, there's no fake sugar in there either you know nothing that's gonna add like nothing added to it okay none of that stuff you can have sausages you can have cured meats and like I was saying before you can definitely have bacon um, so that list is pretty comprehensive you know I didn't do any of that stuff before I didn't have any of the the milk and the yogurt and the cheese I really do think that if you're gonna start this out you want to just eliminate everything because we don't we don't really know like what our bodies are reacting to until we remove it and then you know slowly bring it back in so you might find that yogurt really really bothers your body and dairy does in general right it just depends on the person so i'm never going to say that like there's one diet that works for everyone i think that's where we all get it wrong is that we think that we can we can we can suggest that kind of thing when really body types are all so different so just my recommendation would be to remove everything except for meat and then start to add that stuff into this kind of less optimal food list as you go maybe after a month two or so okay and then the final list uh this is not one that is super popular <laughs> uh because it's in our culture at least in the united states organ meats are not super they don't sound very satisfying to most people myself included however if you're going to do the carnivore diet you need to do it nose to tail, meaning get some organ meats in there to help you supplement your diet because that's where a ton of the nutrients and the vitamins comes from. Go to a butcher if you need to find this stuff. You're probably not gonna find it as easy as like a local grocery store. But top to bottom, liver, number one. So liver is like so good for us. So, so, so good for us. Most cultures in the US, we just like throw it out 
give it away, but in other cultures, it's like a delicacy. It seriously is because it's just so good for us. So I'll make another video about how to cook liver properly so it doesn't taste like absolute like shit because it kind of does if you're not used to it. But over time, your palate does get used to it. So liver is number one. Number two is heart. Yes, heart. Number three is oxtail. And then you have cheeks, tongue, brain, kidneys, and feet. Like I said, to have the best results from the carnivore diet, you wanna include some organ meats because that's going to make you as healthy as possible and give you all the nutrients you need. Believe it or not, we don't need any of the nutrients that plants give us, contrary to what we've been sold through marketing and advertising and all that kind of stuff, um, surprise, surprise. But we can get it all through just this carnivore diet. It's better if we have the carniv if, if we have the organ meats in that to help us supplement. So that is a full list of all of the organ meats there, you guys. Um, I, like I said, I'll make a video about how to cook like the liver in particular, because I really think that you can kind of slam dunk it if you just have liver um, throughout your week in little ways. There's kind of some tips and tricks, so I'll come back to that one in another video. Now, the, the, the final thing that I wanted to go over is like tips and tricks for how to actually cook this type of stuff. So, so um, maybe you're like me where you've grown up and you have like the Pam shit where you just like spray it and that's what you use to cook like everything. I've also used olive oil, coconut oil to cook. On the carnivore diet, you're, you're not doing any of that. That's a no-no. So the typical way really to cook on the carnivore diet and what to cook with is other animal fats. So like I was saying with bacon, I'll cook the bacon, I'll have the bacon fat in there, and then I'll cook the eggs in the bacon fat, and it just works perfectly. That's that's what I do. So you can use bacon fat in other with cooking other meats if you want. You can also use tallow and lard and duck fat. I've not really used duck fat before, but you know, I think it works for some people. I know it does. And then for people that are gonna like keep some dairy in this, you can add ghee, butter, cheese, and like cream basically to cook in. Um, for some of the stuff and I'm gonna add some other recipes as well that we can use to like cook off of and just have like a really bomb week of food but those are the best ways to cook so you know ditch the olive oil definitely ditch canola oil that stuff's horrible for you definitely ditch vegetable oil all seed oils just like boom get 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 rid of that stuff it's just awful for you start, start cooking with these kinds of like animal fats predominantly because that's what's gonna be the best for your body and you're gonna feel really really full doing it Okay, so all of this said, I know that it can be um, a little bit, you know, challenging to do all this kind of stuff on a budget. This is the way I look at it, right, is are you going to spend money on having healthful food that's going to make you really, really happy and healthy and look really good? Or are you going to spend money on medical bills later on that, or the workout crap that we all get conned into buying and all that stuff? once we realize that the food we're eating is damaging to us. I choose to spend money in the other side, which is getting food. Um, that said, I'm not, you know, out here, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not gonna spend like a million dollars on food a year. Nobody's got time for that. So I do think that if you're gonna try to eat on a budget, you know, and you're gonna make sure that you can eat food um, that is good for you, but on a budget, quick little trick is you can, number one, um, get burger patties at a store instead of steaks. Burger patties are great. Um, you could treat yourself maybe to a steak a couple times or once a week if you'd like, but the burger patty is totally good. Another trick is that you can actually go to McDonald's and order a beef patty there, and it's 100% beef, and you can literally get that from McDonald's. That's like an, if you're in desperate kind of a situation because McDonald's is kind of gnarly. <laughs> kind of gnarly. Uh, but they do have that option, so like if you're on the go and you're not trying to spend however much money on a steak and that kind of thing. Just go ahead and get a burger like beef patty and that should do the trick. That works for me at least. Oh, and I almost forgot to add the one last list that I wanted to, to go into. This is just general groceries to have at the grocery store. So we've kind of gone through the list of specific types of groceries to get as far as the food is concerned, but top to bottom, meat, get all kinds. Eggs, all good. Cheese, butter, cream, if you can tolerate dairy, if you're gonna go that route, go ahead and get that. Um, as far as cooking with materials, tallow, ghee, lard, or duck fat um, to use as cooking oil, av avoid the rest of the stuff that we traditionally use. Sparkling water, I swear to God, I live by it. Um, I actually think I've gone through like probably six of these today, so <laughs> fine, go ahead and get that. Pink salt or sea salt, electrolytes. I talk about this in the other video, but I have electrolytes that I um, literally swear by. It's called Keto Chow, I put a link below. Uh, for anybody if they want to use that link to uh, buy their own and then finally you can you know have chicken or beef broth to help with the transition helps to keep you full 
I didn't need that. <laughs> I really did not need that. I don't know that many of you will, but it's there if you need it as an option just to sip on. Spices and seasoning, cool. Just don't, don't be OD about it. Don't overdo it too much. And then coffee and tea are all good. So I don't actually drink too much caffeinated coffee anymore. I only have like maybe this much a day. The rest that I have is decaf. So thank God because I love the taste of coffee. That is pretty much everything that we will need for this carnivore lifestyle. It really, really has transformed my entire life to eat this way and it cuts out so much of the crap, the complexities of what you can and can't eat and measuring and all that stuff. Just when you go to the grocery store, get this list, figure out you know a couple things that work for you and then eat until you're full. Eat until you're full. Especially us girls, we're out there, we try to min minimize what we eat. We try to eat like fewer calories, eat at 80% fullness or whatever it is. No, on this, pro on this type of lifestyle, you wanna eat until you're comfortably full, okay? And then eat again when you're hungry. That's one of the most liberating, liberating things about this whole carnivore lifestyle is that you really, you really don't have to limit yourself. You can just eat like a fat ass <laughs> as long as it's meat and um, don't overeat all the time, but don't worry about limiting or any of that type of stuff. Just eat normally. It's going to change your life. So guys, I am actually a coach, a carnivore coach. I have all sorts of meal plans and I have accountability. I have um, so many ways that basically will help you maintain this lifestyle and really just change your life completely. If you're interested in that, go ahead and DM me privately on Instagram. Again, this is my Instagram below right here. And I also talk about carnivore stuff all the time. So if you're interested in learning more about carnivore and just kind of going along this journey with me to completely break this matrix that we're all stuck in with the food industry and everything that we've been taught, um, go ahead and subscribe below. I love talking about this stuff. I also talk about life without drinking. I stopped drinking when I was 25 or 26 years old. Probably, probably one of the best, it, it's definitely the best thing I ever did for myself, but it's uncommon to see people in that age do that. However, there are so many other people out there that have slowly sort of come around to this lifestyle because I think they're seeing that life could be so much better than what we've been taught to believe it should be with alcohol kind of inundating our lives and all of the advertising and the marketing that comes with that too. So I see the food industry and the alcohol industry as one and the same in terms of how they teach us what uh, life should be like when in reality life could really just be so much better if we just eliminate so much of what we've been taught is good and just debrainwash ourselves. So if you did like this video, please go ahead and like it so that the YouTube algorithm can pick that up and go serve this to other people who might need to see it as well. Uh, people who might be struggling with you know, really serious issues with their health. I really hope that they can see this as well. And if you guys have any comments, any questions, anything at all, I would really love to see it. I have an awesome, awesome community that's been a part of this and just really cool people that are interested in living the best lives that they can possible. And they're willing to challenge the paradigms that we've been served for years and kind of live a little bit more of a radical lifestyle. So if you're one of those people and you're interested in kind of following this path with us, We'd love to see your comments. All right. Thank you guys. See ya.